Hey guys, it's Drew Brashler with DBB Audio. Today I am going to be bringing you a tutorial on the Behringer X32 Combinator, which is an effect that's built into the Behringer X32. Now this was originally modeled after the Behringer MDX8000, which is a two high rack multi-band compressor, which uh, is pretty impressive. It had eight DCA circuits and 16 RMS level detectors, so a lot of circuitry in this thing. Now the combinator that's built into the X32 here is dual channel or stereo, um, and it's a multi-band compressor with five different bands of adjustment. So let's go ahead and jump in and see how this thing works. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this thing routed in the X32. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and press the effects button here. Now uh, the combinator lives on uh, effects racks one through four, um, but it's not able to live on five through eight. So if you're wanting to use the combinator, you have to use effects one, two, three, or four um, in the effects rack. So um, we're gonna go ahead and insert this on effects one. So I have effects one selected, just like that. And we're gonna take the type and change this all the way down. It's actually pretty far through this and it's right there, combinator and dual combinator. Now there's two different ones. There's the combinator, which is a stereo um, setup, and then the dual combinator, which is two separate combinators. So what we're gonna be doing today is the combinator two, which is the dual combinator. So we're going to go ahead and press select with that. And then we're going to insert this on one of my vocal channels. Um, so my source, I'm going to rotate to insert and uh, just like that, and my source here, I'm also going to rotate to insert. Now, you can select the inserts by going and pressing view on a channel. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and select my channel 17 here, and we can set the insert by going to our config tab and looking at our insert here. So we can rotate this. If it's not inserted, it will read off. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and insert this on effects one left, which is the first channel of the combinator. So uh, go ahead and do that, press select, and it is now routed from channel 17 into the combinator, um, and then it comes back and then puts the audio out from the um, channel 17. So we can change our insert position here uh, by changing it to pre or post, which you can see here. Um, but let's go ahead and get back into the combinator and uh, see a little bit more about it. So now that we're here, we're in effects one, uh, we can notice that we're in the dual combinator and down here we can see one, two, three, and four. Now these are the different layers of my cake. Um, so we can change between these by the layer button here. So layer one and two is on channel A or uh, channel 17 right up here, so A. And then three and four are the different layers. They're an exact replica of one and two, except they're independent. Um, and these are gonna be controlling channel B, which is currently inserted on channel 18. So let's go ahead and start over on the left-hand side here. Now the mix allows us to control the wetness of the signal. So we can control this from zero all the way to 100, basically giving us a, a parallel compression. Um, now one thing to note, if this is at 100 or if this is all the way at zero, the insert delay of this effect is still the same. Now when you do insert this effect, you end up having a, a 0.71 millisecond delay. Um, now if this is not active, um, so if you press that, it actually changes the insert delay down a little bit to 0.67 milliseconds. So if you're trying to do some time aligning and this is a uh, insert that's on something that's really important, then just keep that in mind. Um, now also one other thing to note, if this is active, uh, changing the crossover type over here uh, will also change the delay. So on 48, uh, dB per octave, you're at 0.71 milliseconds of delay. If you change it to the 12 dB per octave, uh, you're at 0.69 milliseconds. So let's go ahead and make sure that our mix knob is up at 100%. Attack is going to be how fast the compressor will attack on a signal once it reaches a threshold. So we have a attack adjustment from zero um, all the way up to 19 in increments of one. Now the attack here, is, uh, is interesting, it's, a, it's actually a dual step attack. So the initial attack is um, changed by the number here. Um, and you can check out my blog post and I actually ran some different waves through here to show what the attack is. Now with the attack set to 19, um, the initial attack 
clamps down really fast. It's actually half a millisecond. Um, and then a slower attack is zero with the initial attack being about 1.5 milliseconds. Now, once that initial attack happens, a little bit of time goes on, about five milliseconds, and then there's a little transition period of about three milliseconds after that. Um, so altogether, no matter what your attack is set to, um, the compressor will be in full compression within about eight milliseconds of the signal being hit on the threshold. Um, so with the attack knob here, we're just changing the initial attack. Um, so our release is adjustable. Uh, there's also an auto release, but we have a release adjustment from 20 all the way up to three seconds. So 20 milliseconds all the way up to three seconds. Um, SBC stands for uh, Automatic Spectrum Balance Control. Now this is something that's pretty interesting. It acts like a makeup gain on the compressor. However, the Spectrum Balance Control does this independently on all the bands. So when this is on, and we can see the SBC on is here, we can turn it off by clicking. When this is on, it will automatically apply up to 10 dB of makeup gain to adjust the, the makeup gain on each band here so that the EQ output is even. So say that you are compressing a whole lot on the low end and nothing on the upper uh, four bands then the SBC will actually go in and apply 10 dB of gain to bring the low end back to being equal. Now the benefit of the SBC is that you can dial in the compression on each of those individual bands without having to worry about changing the overall tone of the, uh, of the instrument or channel and making sure that the EQ is flat all the way across. Now this only does up to 10 dB of addition. If you are happening to do 11 dB of compression, it's only gonna bring it up to one under. Um, so that's that. The SBC speed is how fast the spectrum balance control is going to act. So uh, one is actually slower and 10 is much faster. So with a setting of one, the SBC um, speed seems to be about uh, two and a half to three seconds. Uh, when it's all the way up to 10, it's much faster at about half a second. Uh, the crossover is going to be adjustable. Um, basically is changing where the different bands are adjusting in the overall um, spectrum. So check out my blog post as I, I have smart measurements showing where those actually cross over. Um, the difference on this with the 48 and 12 is how steep of a slope is this crossover going to be applying? So if you're wanting to have a lot more fine-tuned adjustments, you're going to want to have it at 48. If you're wanting to have this be a little bit less impactful on the channel, then you're going to want to have it at 12 as it's going to be a lot more broadband of a mix. Ratio is going to be the compression ratio uh, that's applied by the compressor. And so this can go all the way from 1.1 all the way up to limiting, um, giving you a lot of options here. So the SBC meter is one thing I skipped over this uh, if we click down this will show the gain or um, reduction of the SBC as it's applying it so let's go ahead and jump over to the second layer here now the threshold allows us to set a point for the processor to actually process the signal um, so once the audio level rises above this threshold the compressor would start attenuating the signal by the value set by the ratio um, and so with the threshold, we have adjustment from zero dB all the way down to negative 40. Um, so we can set that to give ourselves the compression that we want. Um, gain is gonna be a global gain. Um, so this is going to give the overall compressor a gain up or down. Peak meter is going to be showing um, the peak uh, of the different bands of the channel. Uh, so that way we can kind of set our threshold from here. So when I'm initially applying this to a channel, I'll go ahead and press peak meter and watch the signal as it's happening up here. That way I can kind of dial in my threshold to where I want it. And then I'll undo that and see the actual reduction that's happening. This is going to be our band select knob. So we have five different bands. We have low, low mid, mid, high mid, and high. Um, as we can see, low, low mid, mid, uh, high, mid, and high. Um, so we can go through the different bands to select um, the 
threshold independently and the band gain independently. Now, the band solo, uh, I need to caution you guys on this. This is a destructive solo. And by destructive, I mean that uh, if you have this inserted on a, uh, on a PA system, on the left-right channels, and you hit this, it is going to solo this effect on the mid through the PA. So if you're going to be using the band solo, make sure that it is during a practice um, where it's not something that, uh, you know, people are going to be looking at you, giving you strange looks and whatnot. So the band select knob controls uh, this. So the band threshold and band gain are set on which band select we are on. So the band threshold will give me an independent um, band adjustment comparative to the overall threshold. So if this is set at negative 10 globally, and my mid is now set at negative five, that means that the threshold on the mid band is actually at negative 15. Now, if this is at positive five, now my threshold on the mid is set at negative five. Uh, band gain is going to be the gain for that independent band. Uh, now, likewise, uh, gain on the global and the independent side um, will work together or against each other. So if this is up at five and the band gain down here is set at negative five, um, the overall gain of this mid band is at zero, whereas all the rest of them are up at five. Band lock allows us to bypass the compression and the automatic spectrum balance on individual bands. So you can go ahead and go and lock um, this individual band and then go here and you can lock this. And we can notice that it will put a slash through the ones that are locked here. Now this is independent, so I can lock the mid and lock the low, but not have locks on the low mid, high mid, and high. Uh, band reset allows us to reset our band gain and threshold on individual bands uh, just by pressing that, so that's pretty cool. And then um, our ratio is uh, the same on layer one and layer two. Okay, so now that I've taught you guys all the different controls of the combinator, I'm going to go ahead and insert this on a vocalist and uh, do a little bit of fun with this and kind of show you guys how I would implement this. 